Yo, what is good, dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up our progress bar that lets us know how much power we currently have and how much power we need to get to a, a dub or a win in this game. Uh, so now we want to actually set up our states and we're going to navigate to the game mode to do that. So the way we're going to do our states and control our states is via enum. And in Unreal, setting up an enum is a little bit different than what you're accustomed to inside of Unity. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close all of these tabs to the right. We just want our game mode open. And inside my game mode header class, I could come up above where the class declaration is. And here you can create all types of data types you can create structs enums and uh, your own custom data types uh, in a bigger project you probably want to do this in a separate header file and just include this header file wherever you want to use the certain data type but for this project we'll just do it here inside the game mode so what we're going to do is type in u enum and this will declare an enum for us now i want to say enum class here and I'm going to call this E game state. And I'm going to actually move these down here. And I, I want this to be a uint8. Uh, I know in the original version of this, uh, they were able to use blueprint type without it being a, a uint8. But I believe now you have to have it as a uint8. Uh, so let's go ahead and give ourselves some states. So we got plane, we got one, we got lost, and then we have none. And this is just a just in case type of mode here, just in case it's not set. Uh, so what we're going to do is use this state to trigger things in our UI and in our character class. But in this lesson, we're just going to start with the UI. So what we need to do is create a variable based off of this enum inside of our class here. And I'm going to make it private. So come down here, make a private section. And then we're just going to create an e-game state. And we're going to call this our current game state. And we need to create getters and setters for this current game state so that we can access the data in this enum in other places, especially our HUD class and our character class. So let's go ahead and create a public e game state. It means it return, e, returns the e game state. And we're going to call this get current game state. And it's also going to be const. And then we want to make a avoid set current game state. And this is going to take in an e game state uh, or a new state. Now, if you're confused about enums, it's basically using um, what this is is an integer, and we're just giving it a name. So. It makes it easier for us to keep track of. And when we, get, when we get the current game state, we're going to get the value of this variable here that we just created. And when we set the current game state, we're going to set the value of this variable here. So let's just go ahead and create the implementations of these two functions here. And in e game state, get current game state we're just going to return our current game state and in a set game state we're just going to set our current game state equal to the new state just that simple um so now we actually want to fill these variables here so i want to go ahead and do it and begin play so right after we call the super we, we need to go ahead and set our state to playing so we're going to set current game state 
and we're going to set it to e game state plain and that'll set our current game state to plain now i know that we're going to want to get this value in blueprint so we're going to have to create a u function macro here and call this blueprint pure and let's give it a category of power and i need to also give this one a category if you wanted to have something like an event in your game or something that your player does and have it be able to set the game state in blueprint you would just go ahead and give this u function blueprint callable but for this lesson we're not actually going to be setting the game state outside of this uh, code class here so we set our game state to playing here on begin play now whenever we are checking our power level we need to ensure that we are actually making sure that we check and see if if our power level went above or below the power amount to win so here we created a a timer that loops and this is where we basically would do that do that extra logic so I'm going to navigate to this start power level decay function and here we get our player character so first we see if our player character is valid and then we see if our power level is greater than zero and that will say well this will tell us to uh decrease our power level by our decay amount but we also need to add a check to see before we even do this um right here we need to check and see if our player character has a power level that is greater than our amount to win so we need to see our pair player character dot get current power level and we need to see if that is greater than our power amount to win if that is true then we want to go ahead and set our current game state equal to one and now we need to wrap this in an else if statement so i'm gonna cut it i'm gonna just type else if and i'm i'm going to move this here to this uh, else if statement. I'm gonna paste it here. So as this reads, we're checking to see if our player character is valid. Then first we check to see if our power level is greater than the amount to win. And if that's the case, we go ahead and set our state to one. Uh, else, we check if our power level is greater than zero, and then we go ahead and decrease. Uh, whoops. I made a mistake here. I uh, I copied something and pasted something before. Yeah, so I need this first. So <laughs> let me get this back and then type my else if here and then make sure that I paste that code inside of the code block and then I'll copy this check here, paste it here, get rid of that. So now if our player character is valid, we check and see if our power level is greater than our power amount to win. If that's the case, we set our player state to one or our game state to one. Else we check if our power level is greater than zero. And if that is true, we go ahead and set our, um, We'll go ahead and update our power level by taking some power away. But if none of this is true, which means our power level is less than or equal to zero, we need to go ahead and set our players, our current game state to lost. And 
I'm gonna go ahead and give that a build. So I'm gonna stop the editor for now. And I'm gonna come over here, build this project. Hopefully it doesn't take two days. Okay, that, that's the kind of time we need right there. You get what I'm saying? 14 seconds, that makes sense, okay? Um, so now that we got a successful build, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. And now we're gonna link this logic to our HUD class and have some text displaying what our current game state is. So let's go ahead and open up our HUD class here. And let's go, let's go ahead and drag in a text here. And we're gonna put this text in the top left so that we don't have to change the anchor point. And we're gonna click the size the content box because we're gonna actually pass in a few different strings here for this to read for us. And Let's just center this Let's say 0 0.5 and 0.5. And maybe we can give it a little bit on the X, maybe somewhere right there. And over here, we have a lot of options for our text. Let's justify it to the left to make sure that it starts from left to right. You can also change the font. Uh, we don't have any fonts inside of here. But if you did import font files, you can go ahead and change. I'm going to change this to bold italic, maybe just italic. Yeah. Okay. And maybe give it more letter space in here. Okay. And there's a lot more other settings here. You can set a material for the font so that it could have like a, a animated material. There's a lot of things you can do here. Um, you don't need to import text mesh pro. All this stuff comes right out of the box. Um, so let's go ahead and give it an outline of one and maybe two. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. And that's all I'll do for now. So let's go ahead and bind this text here. Let's go ahead and create a binding and let's um, let's rename this function to get current our progress. And let's get the current game state. Here. That's what we'll call this function. So this function is going to return a string value for us. So what we need to go ahead and do is get our game mode. And let's go ahead and cast to our BP game mode. Another clever way to do things like this. Uh, if you're working in a bigger project, you don't want to do casts. Uh, you want to do something maybe like an interface or like I was saying in my other video, to have a function that sets this from the game mode. That way we don't have to cast to this game mode inside of the blueprint. We can actually just write directly to this widget inside of C++. That'll help out with performance and just cleanliness. Uh, but for this small project, when you're just, we're just learning some basics here. This is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a pure cast. And we want to get our current game state. That's going to return an enum. And off of this enum, we can drag out and say select. And this will let us select what we want to do depending on the value of this index here. And this select node works for Booleans, integers, floats, all types of things. This is a, this is a good node for dynamic programming. So for this playing string, we, we just want to go ahead and bypass this. We don't want to say anything here. Uh, but for this one string, we can go ahead and type in you win with an exclamation point. For lost, we can go ahead and type in you lost with an exclamation point. And for none, we'll just bypass it. Uh, for playing, just for testing, so we can see that the playing game mode is actually working. And let's go ahead and say 
select as many power cells as you can. Okay, so now if we compile this, and let's go ahead and play. You see it says as many power cells as you can. Uh, of course, our justification didn't work. So something's happened here. Um, that is actually annoying. Okay. Yeah, we can't justify it to the left. Okay, let's justify it to the center. And let's see if we type this in what it will say here. Let me just remove this binding real quick. Yeah, for some reason it's starting from the center, but let's see. If we just apply this to the left, nothing happens. That puts it in all caps. Um, let's see here. I'm actually going to not align it to the center. Okay, maybe that was our issue there. I'm gonna take the alignment off of the center here on the X. And I believe that will work for us. So I'm gonna rebind it to our get current game state and compile that. And then I'm gonna give it another test. So collect as many power cells as you can. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at that loss clause here. Okay, so you see there it says you lost. Now let's, uh, just to test the win, let's go into our game mode class and let's uh, change these values a little bit. Let's change this DK amount to like one real quick. That way we can collect enough um, sales to actually win. And I'm actually gonna go to my battery spawner class and I'm going to spawn these way faster, like 0.1. And I'm gonna make the spawn delay like the max spawn delay one second so that we get a lot of them. So here we go. It should be spawning like crazy. So we should be able to win this. Okay, you see we got the UN clause when we fill up our battery power bar. So we will continue to uh Further this project alone, we want to add a state. Well, not add a state. We want to add the logic inside of our player class that will destroy our player or kill our player, add physics to him, rigid body physics to him, and to just show that we lost the game a little bit better. So if you're ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video, and I'll see you guys in there. Peace.